shrub. This is called winged euonymus or burning bush. The leaves turn bright red in the fall. And it's called winged euonymus. I'll try to get a little closer. You can all see their little corky structures point to them along on the branches. They look like little rectangular pieces. See those? And that, that's where the wings come from. It's usually on more of the mature wood. And that's the wing of the winged euonymus. How bad ever glass Mary White, the third baseman, two gigs this year. Six stages. Wind Juanus will produce red fruit in the fall, and they are desired by wildlife, so that's how the plants will spread. Their root structure, this is a great specimen. Good job. Um, <laughs> the, their roots are very dense and fibrous, and they can get so dense it's almost like a mat that won't let anything else grow up through it. And some people will have these shrubs and say, oh, I've got... I've got wind geonimus, but it's, it's got to be sterile because they never have any little seedlings come up. Well, if you look at this root mash, you can imagine that's why. But if you look beyond where the shrub is growing, I'll put my money on it. You'll probably find some little seedlings. And even if they're not in your yard, they're probably in the woods across the street or somewhere in the neighborhood. All right. Any quick questions before we... I'll be quizzing you all, so... <laughs> study. Yes? So if you pull any of the... Um, to get rid of more of them, maybe? Uh, I'm batting the right fielder. This is actually a pretty good good job. The, you can see a lot of the ends of the of the roots. There aren't any major pieces of root that are left. So something like that, for the size of this shrub, I think that was fairly successful. If, I mean, wind geonimus can be quite large and, and quite old, at, you know, in and, and very extensive, so you may have to do a lot more digging to remove it. But there was a bigger tree on that one. This, is, this looks, like, it looks like it's a little, depending on, on where it was growing, what was around it, but that looks like it, that was pretty much it. So it won't get <laughs> No, I mean, it will if it was left in the ground. Sure, it, it would keep growing. Yes. Yeah, they can get six, eight, ten feet tall, and they can be just massive, massive shrubs. Yes? Now batting the extra hitter. Um, on the table, I, I brought copies. There's a blue handout, and it's our state list for Connecticut. You can also get this on our Invasive Plant Working Group website. There's a difference between, in some cases, between a plant that is determined by scientific criteria to be invasive or potentially invasive if it's not as widespread, and one that is banned or prohibited from buying it, selling it, transplanting, cultivating, and so on. Shrubs like Jackie's Barberry and Wind Juanimus, trees like Nori Maple, they are invasive because they meet scientific criteria by how much they spread and so on, but they are, it's legal for them to be sold in Connecticut. Okay. That's, that's, that, those are the regulations that we have. In Massachusetts, they also have a list of invasive plants, and they have, I think just about pretty much everything on their list is prohibited or banned. Every state can write its own regulations, and this is what we have in Connecticut right now. So they're available to sell. No one's breaking any law if they sell them. So it's up to individuals what you might want to purchase. Maybe there are plenty of other alternatives too, which we can, can talk about if we have time. Things that you can plant intentionally, or you can to replace the invasives that you're controlling, or you might want to let Mother Nature help help see what might come in naturally, as long as you're keeping up with the invasive control.